Hi everybody, you've understood the individual labour supply curve is backward bending, but in truth, the industry labour supply curve and supply curves for labour for individual firms are more useful and more relevant for you. So pay attention as we go through this. Let's look at the industry. So let's say this is the market for nurses right now. We have on the y-axis the wage, or the real wage, on the x-axis the quantity of workers. The supply curve for a given profession in an industry is upward sloping like that. And you might think, well hang on a minute, how could it be backward bending for individuals, but then when you put them all together we get a linear upward slope? That seems a bit odd, and that's a good point. We make an assumption in economics that as wages keep increasing, even though a lot of individuals in the nursing profession may have a backward bending supply curve, sounds weird, but anyway, um, we make an assumption that when wages go up, another effect dominates the backward bending nature of individual supply curves. And that is, with higher wages, those who are trained to be nurses but are now working in other professions see nursing as a great profession to come back to with higher wages, so they come back and supply increases. But also, nurses that have got qualifications who are currently economically inactive and not participating in the labour force, now re-enter the labour force, seeing the higher wages as an incentive to work back as a nurse again. So we assume, therefore, that as wages go up, there is a constant increase in the quantity of workers, or in this case, the quantity of nurses. Hence, it's uh, upward sloping. That is an assumption, but it's an accepted assumption. So therefore, we can have uh, a given wage in this market and a given supply of nurses, let's say, and as wages go up, for the reasons I've just said, the number of workers will increase, so the quantity of um, workers here will, will increase as wages rise. That is an extension of labour supply. And similarly, if wages decrease from W1 to W3, there'll be a contraction in labour supply from Q1 to Q3. We move down the supply curve, and that is a contraction. Right, so we can do the analysis that we're used to in the same way as we're used to as well to show that for the reasons we said, you know, as wages increase we see the uh, increase in the number of workers like I've said, those who have the qualifications come back and work those who are economically inactive that can work in this market will come and work therefore increasing uh, labour supply when wages go up but when wages fall uh, there is less of an incentive for uh, workers to work in this industry and we see a contraction of labour supply as a result the number of workers willing and able to supply their labour is lower at lower wage rates, hence the contraction of supply. That's fine. At the same time, uh, there are non-wage shifters of this supply curve, so the reasons why quantity uh, of labour supply can increase and decrease irrespective of the wage, you can watch my video to understand that in this playlist, and the elasticity of labour supply may change as well. I've got a video covering why that might take place too. That's all fine. So that's for the industry, that's for the market, the labour supply curve, you need to be able to draw like that. What about for individual firms? Well, their labour supply curves will depend on the kind of labour market they're operating in. So if you've got firms that are operating in a perfectly competitive labour market, then they are wage takers. So for them, they have no control over the wage that they can actually provide for their workers, they are wage takers. As a result of that, their average cost is going to equal their marginal cost, which is going to equal their supply of labour. So the average cost of labour equals the marginal cost of labour, which equals the supply of labour. All right. So that's what happens in perfect competition. If firms are operating in a perfectly competitive labour market, they are wage takers, they accept the wage and they have a perfectly elastic labour supply curve looking like that. However, if a firm is a monopsony, so if a firm has got control over the number of workers they can hire, it is the sole employer, let's say, or a dominant employer of workers in a given industry, then their supply curve is going to look very different. They have control over the wages that they can actually issue to their workers, but they are constrained by their supply curve. So, their supply curve is going to be upward sloping like this. So they have an average cost of labour, which is their supply curve, but they have a marginal cost curve, which is twice as steep, but also upward sloping. Now, the way to think of it is like this, guys. Reverse it for a monopoly. Remember in product markets, we had a monopoly, 
and we said that monopolies, they are not price takers, they're price makers, but they are governed by the demand curve. If they reduce the price of their product, they reduce it not just for that one extra unit, they reduce it for all units that they sold preceding it as well, which means that their marginal revenue curve is twice as steep, downward sloping. For a monopsony, they're not a wage taker, they're a wage maker because they have got control over um, the number of workers they can employ, they have control over the wages that they can charge or they can provide. Um, so they can offer higher and lower wages, but as soon as they offer a higher wage, for example, it's not just a higher wage for the one additional worker, it's a higher wage for everybody. Hence why the marginal cost curve is increasing faster, twice as steep, and still upward sloping. All right? But the reason that they're upward sloping here is because the monopsony can decide the different wages that they want to give to their workers. Whereas in perfect competition, these firms in a perfectly competitive labour market do not have that decision to make. They are wage takers. Monopsonies are wage makers. Hence why their supply curves look like that. Why is average cost equal, equal to supply? For exactly the same reasons as AR was equal to demand in a monopoly diagram. So don't worry too much about the finer details. Just know that that's how you've got to draw these individual firm supply curves. Very useful for you, depending on whatever you're drawing. That's it in this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be confident with that, and I'll see you in the next video.